أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليه مثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين 
وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أن نطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينذرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توسية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام 
قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا فلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون اصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفلون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينكرون صرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إن نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أن خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم 
اللهم إنا نحتفظك ونستودعك أدياننا وأبداننا وأنفسنا وأهلنا وأولادنا وأولادنا وأموالنا وكل شيء أعطيتنا اللهم اجعلنا وإياهم في كنفك وأمانك وعياذك من كل شيطان مريد وجبار عنيد وذي بغي وذي حسد ومن شر كل ذي شر إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم جملنا بالعافية والسلام وحققنا بالتقوى والاستقامة وأعذنا من موجبات الندامة إنك سميع الدعاء اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وأولادنا ومشايخنا وأصحابنا وإخواننا في الدين ولمن أحبنا فيك ولمن أحسن إلينا والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا كمال المتابعة له ظاهرا وباتنا في عافية وسلامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله يا الله يا الله ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا واستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم استغفر الله 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 
استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم واتوب اليه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله 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 سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فاخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل 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 
فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوءٌ وَاتَّبَعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَظِيمٍ اللهم يا لطيف الطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف الطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف الطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم امين اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد صاحب التاج والمعراج والبراك والعلم دافع البلاء والوباء والقحط والمرض والالم اسمه مكتوب مرفوع مشفوع منكوش في اللوح والقلم سيد العرب والعجم جسمه مقدس معتر متهر منور في البيت والحرم شمس الدحى بدر الدجى صدر العلا نور الهدى كهف الورى مصباح الظلم جميل الشيم شفيع الأمم صاحب الجود والكرم والله عاصمه وجبريل خادمه والبراك مركبه والمعراج سفره وسدرة المنتهى مقامه وقاب قوسين مطلوبه والمطلوب مقصوده والمقصود موجوده سيد المرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين انيس الغريبين رحمه للعالمين راحه العاشقين مراد المشتاقين شمس العارفين سراج السالكين مصباح المقربين محب الفقراء والغرباء والمساكين سيد الثقلين نبي الحرمين امام القبلتين وسيلتنا في الدارين وسيلتنا في الدارين صاحب قاب قوسين محبوب رب المشرقين والمغربين جد الحسن والحسين جد الحسن والحسين مولانا ومولى الثقلين ابي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله نور من نور الله نور من نور الله يا ايها المشتاقون بنور جماله صلوا عليه واله واصحابه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمه ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وارغلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين 
ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا حليم يا عليم أنت ربي وعلمك حسبي فنعم الرب ربي ونعم الحسب حسبي تنسر من تشاء وأنت العزيز الرحيم نسألك العصمة في الحركات والسكنات والكلمات والإرادات والخطرات من الشكوك والذنون والأوهام الساترة للقلوب عن مطالعة الغيوب فقد ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا فثبتنا وانصرنا وسخر لنا هذا البحر كما سخرت البحر لموسى وسخرت النار لإبراهيم وسخرت الجبال والحديد لداود وسخرت الريح والشياطين والجن لسليمان وسخر لنا كل بحر هو لك في الأرض والسماء والملك والملكوت وبحر الدنيا وبحر الآخرة وسخر لنا كل شيء يا من بيده ملكوت كل شيء كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد انصرنا فإنك خير الناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين واغفر لنا فإنك خير الغافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الراحمين وارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين واهدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين وهب لنا ريحا طيبة كما هي في علمك وانشرها علينا من خزائن رحمتك واحملنا بها حمل الكرامة مع السلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة 
إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في دنيانا وديننا وكن لنا صاحبا في سفرنا وخليفة في أهلنا واطمس على وجوه أعدائنا وامسخهم على مكانتهم فلا يستطيعون المضيء ولا المجيء إلينا ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه وعنت الوجوه للحي القيوم وقد خاب من حمل ظلما طاسين حاميم عين قاف مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان حاميم 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 هم الأمر وجاء النصر فعلينا لا ينصرون حاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل الطوب شديد العقاب ذي التول لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير بسم الله بابنا تبارك حيطاننا ياسين سقفنا كاف ها يا عين صاد كفايتنا حاميم عين سين قاف حمايتنا فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم 
فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم ستر العرش مسبول علينا وعين الله ناظرة إلينا بحول الله لا يقدر علينا والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين إن وليي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن وليي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن وليي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز 
Ya Latif, 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 Ya Latif. Ya Latif, 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 Ya Latif. Ya Latifan bi khalqihi, Ya Aliman bi khalqihi, Ya Khabiran bi khalqihi. Ultuf bina ya latif ya alim ya khabir Ya latifan bi khalqihi ya aliman bi khalqihi ya khabiran bi khalqihi Ultuf bina ya latif ya alim ya khabir يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه ألطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير اللهم يا من لطفت في خلق السماوات والأرض ولطفت بالأجنة في بطون أمهاتها ألطف بنا لطفا يليك بكرمك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله اللهم يا من جعلت الصلاة على النبي من القربات نتقرب إليك بكل صلاة سليت عليه من أول النشأة إلى ما لا نهاية من الكمالات بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك إن شاء الله we'll continue with ذكر جامعة لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله إن شاء الله ما يكتوعنا اللهم أمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد 
كما بركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our Shaykh, Teacher, Murshid, and Master, Sayyidina Shaykh Faisal Hamid Abdul Razak. O oh Allah, may you increase him in knowledge and wisdom. O oh Allah, may you protect him from evil, and we pray that he will lead his marids on the straight path towards you. O oh Allah, we pray for the Shaykh and his family. We pray that you strengthen them in Iman, keep them in good health, and grant them long life in Islam. O oh Allah, we pray that you protect them from all evil, ease their trials, and grant them the sweetness of paradise. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِينَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ O Allah, forgive us for our sins and guide us on the straight path leading to paradise. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of us present here. O oh Allah, answer our dua and take care of our needs. O oh Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our parents that you grant them your grace and mercy as they raised us in childhood. O oh, oh Allah, grant our parents long life and good health in Islam. O oh Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive our parents and grant them paradise. O oh Allah, for our parents who have passed away and returned to you, Allah, we beg you to forgive them. O oh Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the merits of Shaykh Faisal throughout the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you ease our trials and, us, and grant us the strength to face our trials. O oh Allah, make it easy for us to gain true knowledge and to practice it, to be good merits and to get ever closer to you. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of the merits. O oh Allah, we beg you to answer our, our dua and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the Muslims around the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you strengthen us in Iman. O oh Allah, we pray for unity and to make us stronger as a nation. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please comfort and relieve all Muslims who are suffering and have suffered losses. O oh Allah, you are the all-powerful and the almighty. O oh Allah, we beg you to give us victory against the unbelievers. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for the International Islamic Forum and Al-Fasil and Dhikr Halaka. May you make it easy for us to establish many messages for your sake. May you bless the Islamic form and then fasil the to be a beacon of to be a beacon of light for Islam throughout the world. And may you help us to finish building the new masjid soon and make it easy for us to do so. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadan wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun wa Salamun ala Mursani Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الهزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you and welcome once again to our special program this is our daily broadcast coming to you from your Zawiya here at the Islamic Forum of Canada starting at 7 p.m. Toronto time or Eastern time. We welcome you to our program today. We thank you for joining us 
to watch the program today. And we hope you can join us every day, 7 p.m. Toronto time, for this beautiful, blessed, sacred program. We also kindly request you to tell others, your family members, your relatives, your friends, other Muslims that you know, tell them about this program. Share the YouTube link with them. Invite them to watch the program. Inshallah, they'll benefit and you will receive increased blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also kindly request you to enter your name in the chat, your name and the city where you're from, and your updates on the three ongoing projects. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for so doing. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. And then next to the subscribe button, there's a bell icon. Click on the bell and select all for notifications that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you even more and you would receive all the updated information about our different programs. I also want to take this opportunity to uh, thank the sponsors of our dinner program uh, for this month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them for uh, sponsoring the dinner program, all the families that have done so and are doing so. And we also want to recognize our donors, those who donated today, yesterday and before. <coughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all our donors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, bless their families, bless their loved ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enrich them many more times than what they donate to the Islam Forum and grant barakah in their wealth and increase their sustenance and their risk because of their donation to the Islamic Forum, inshallah. And we kindly request you to join that group of donors to donate something today to the Islamic Forum. This program, every day we do this program and we focus on two important objectives for each and every one of you. Uh, first of all, your safety, your well-being, your afia, uh, your good state and good well-being. Uh, our concern for that and our continuous and continuing dua for your well-being and your safety, inshallah. And secondly, your spirituality, your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your connection to the Prophet sallallahu your connection to Islam, your connection to the Quran in this way that you, you, your spirituality is strengthened and it becomes uh, st more strong and you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and by following the teachings and instructions of uh, the program, inshallah, you would certainly get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our focus, your safety, your well-being, uh, your health, your protection, and then your spirituality, your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to this length now, to this objective, we have prepared for you uh, some special uh, videos. Uh, so far, uh, the series includes some the, what we call the editor's pick, and I want to say something about that today. Uh, but do reminded of the three projects that you can hang on to, hold on to, and implement in a conscientious way, in a serious, committed way in your lives. The gratitude project, the salawat project, and the Quran project. Uh, now, our wonderful staff here at the Islamic Forum, they prepared these special editors pick short videos for uh, your uh, benefit, for your enjoyment uh, in this way. And I wanted to share uh, some description of uh, these special videos that inshallah you uh, can be inspired to look at these videos and to like them and to share them with uh, other people that you know so that they can also benefit from these videos. The first one in the series is what we call a bonus video, uh, particularly related to the Quran project that we have, that it would inspire uh, everyone that uh, look at this video to join the Quran project and have this special relationship with the Quran. The, the description our staff is prepared for this video. It, it goes as follows. In the late 1990s, Boston refugees came to Canada looking for shelter during the Boston conflict when they were being killed and slaughtered uh, and the massacre that uh, took place there. They, they ran from their homes, from their country to find a place of safety 
and Canada was one of those places that welcomed them, invited them to come. And so the, the Bosnian refugees came to Canada. And it continued. Sheikh Faisal went to greet them and welcome them to Canada uh, and to show them support and solidarity on behalf of Canadian Muslims. So myself and other Muslim leaders as well uh, went to where they were staying. And at that time, when they arrived to Canada, they were housed in the Canadian Armed Forces base, uh, special places for, as for temporary housing before more permanent arrangements could be made for them. So we went uh, to visit them, uh, myself and others. There was one particular interaction that stuck with Sheikh Faisal throughout all these years. Listen to Sheikh Faisal tell this beautiful and heartwarming story uh, about what I experienced there. A beautiful story with one of the families. And it, it, it shows their love and their attachment to the Quran. In all those difficult circumstances that they went through, it's, it's wonderful. It, it, it still touches my heart uh, every time I remember that experience. And so this is one of the videos that we have in our special series. So we encourage you to look at this video. And to do so, uh, send us your email address, and then we will email you the link for the video that you can look at the video, inshallah. So this is the first of the special series of editor's pick that our staff has be pr prepared for you, inshallah. Uh, and we hope that from this first video, you would be inspired to join the Quran Project which is to recite one page of the Quran every day, at least. And inshallah, a time will come where you, you'll recite the entire Quran from beginning to end. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, you to do so, and bless all of us to recite the Quran time and time again. The second video, or which is video number one now for the editor's pick, because the first one is uh, billed as a bonus video for you for the Quran project. This video is titled, They Asked the Prophet ﷺ, When is the Day of Judgment? And the description goes as follows. People throughout history have declared to know when the end of time will come. People have made such claims. Uh, sometimes giving a date to it. If you remember not too long ago, uh, when the millennium, the new millennium is coming, uh, at the turn of uh, the year 2000, people were saying all kinds of things then of the end of the world. Then there was another occasion, uh, 2012, uh, they were saying that's the end of the world. And people were actually uh, preparing for the end of the world and so on, to those who believe in that. So throughout history, you've seen this happening. But these were all blank statements. So only Allah SWT knows when the end will come. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the famous hadith of Jibreel salam, the hadith of the angel Gabriel, when the, the angel Jibreel salam came to the Prophet SAW and asked questions in the presence of Sahabas, and this hadith is narrated by Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu. And one of the questions he asked, after asking about Islam, and then Iman, and then Ihsan, then he asks about the sa'a, the hour of judgment. When is the hour of judgment? And the Prophet says, says, told him, neither you nor me uh, knows about the, the, when is the day of judgment. And then he asked him about the signs of the day of judgment, and the Prophet responded to that. So the, the, the only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when this will happen. So the, a sahaba, a companion of the Prophet, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him this question. Ya Rasulullah, tell me when is the Day of Judgment? And usually, the Prophet ﷺ would answer in the same way uh, that no one knows when is the Day of Judgment. This time, he responded differently. He responded differently to the Sahaba. So this particular video talks about that. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful story. And at the end, uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned some words that brought tears of joy to this particular Sahaba and to the Sahabas, all of them, when they heard what the Prophet ﷺ told them what will happen, and it brought tears of joy to them. They became so happy that they cried 
in this way. So this, this particular video, which is uh, the, the editor's pick number one, or video number one, talks about this story. Beautiful story that you should listen to, uh, and then you should share it with others. You know, share the, the video, this particular video, with all your family members, relatives, friends, and others, so that they can benefit from it, and you can uh, gain increased blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, uh, to, to receive this video, send us your email, and we will send you the link for this video, inshallah. I, I want to share with you the uh, second of the special editor's pick that the staff uh, at the Islamic Forum have prepared for you. This one is titled, This Dhikr is a Treasure Under the Throne of Allah. This dhikr is a treasure under the throne of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His throne encompasses everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on His throne. Uh, and th then He has treasures there that are described. And this particular dhikr is described as a treasure under the throne of Allah. SubhanAllah. So, uh, would it not be nice for you to recite a dhikr which is a treasure under the throne of Allah? And it's also an indication of the, the power and greatness of this dhikr, the, the spiritual value of this particular dhikr, which is described uh, as a treasure under the throne, the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The description of this particular video uh, goes as follows. Many people feel that they are so powerful. There are people who are, feel they're powerful, and because of this now, they behave in an arrogant way. They feel they're so powerful, so they treat people with disdain and disrespect and so on. For some, it takes a global pandemic so that they can realize the limit of their power. And some people may benefit from this pandemic if they change, if they can realize uh, their limitations. And, and by all means, they should. They should realize their limitations. Because look at what uh, this global pandemic has done to the world, to the world, really. Uh, it has brought the world to its knees. And not only poor people or poor countries. Uh, the, the wealthiest countries, the, the, the most powerful countries have been affected by this. You look at the statistics of what is happening. Yes, many powerful countries have been affected by this global pandemic, perhaps more so than the poor countries. So it's a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it says, for some it takes a global pandemic for them to realize the limit of the power. But this isn't the way of the believer. This isn't the realization that we should have. We must rid, get rid of our false conviction to our own personal power. And we can do nothing except through the ultimate power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for the believer now, they know that power lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do anything and everything, whatever he wants to do. So they submit to Allah. And they are not, they don't feel that they have their own individual independent power. This is the way of the belief. It's different. It's different. They're humble with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I want to share with you a teaching as described by the Prophet وسلم, as a treasure among the treasures under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Almighty Allah to uh, connect us to Him and to the noble. Messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this video would explain uh, this uh, important story for us from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How he is describing this treasure under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we can benefit from inshallah. I, I also want to uh, remind you once again of the three ongoing projects. 
Uh, firstly, the gratitude project, which is for you to write down something that you're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. You enter that in the chat every day for a program, and in the, after you enter your name and the city where you're from, the gratitude project, something you're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And, and this should remind you to always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always express gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and do things that would show this gratitude you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the gratitude project, to always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then secondly, the salawat project. And the salawat project is to recite salawat on the Prophet every day. Whatever number you would like to do, to recite the salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, such as to say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiyyil ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. To recite that as often as you can every day and to record the number you recite every day. We recommend that you should recite the weird al-am dhikr in the morning after fajr, in the evening after maghrib or any time thereafter. If for some reason you're not able to do it immediately after Fajr, then any time in the morning you try to do it as soon as possible thereafter. Similarly in the evening, if you're not able to do it after Maghrib, then you do it as, as, as soon as you're able to, inshallah. So twice a day, in the morning and the evening, the Weird Alam Dhikr, uh, which we do every day in our program, and we have it on our website as well, uh, that you can download the audio file or you can listen to it. Uh, there's a PDF file you can print out uh, to follow along, recite the alam. Because every time you recite the weird alam dhikr, you're reciting the salawat a hundred times. So minimum, a hundred times in the morning, a hundred times in the evening, that you should be reciting salawat, inshallah, salawat project. And thirdly, the Quran project, which is to recite at least one page of the Quran every day. And we hope you, you can do so, inshallah. The first thing is that you must make your niya, your intention to join the Quran project. I know many of, you have, many of you have done so. If you have not, if any one of you have not done so, please do so now. Make your need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I intend, I make my need to join the Quran project. And then you strive to recite at least one page of the Quran every day. Uh, you, 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 you should do that at the beginning of your day. In the morning, you get to be pray fajr and so on. You do your read alam uh, and, and you, and of course your dua, special. Then you recite your one page of the Quran every day. It's very easy, you get it out of the way, kind of. You do it two, three minutes like this, just a few minutes, you recite your one page of the Quran. If you have more time, you do more. And during the day, for the rest of the day, maybe after Dhuhr Salah, Asr Maghrish, after the Salah, you do your one page if you have some time. But at least you've done it at the beginning of the day, you don't miss it. Every day, you're doing at least one page of the Quran. That is the Quran project I would like you to be mindful of. And uh, do remember the Infaq project as well, to spend something every day for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for so doing. And so today, I, I wanted to share with you uh, some information uh, about the special video series we have for you, the Editor's Pick video series. Uh, and they encourage you to send your email to us so we can send you the link for the videos and you can look at them and share it with everyone you know, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for so doing. And now for a special lecture for today. May Allah bless you. Amen. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله 
اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters I greet you all with greetings of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you and welcome once again to our special series of lectures, the commentary on Al-Wirudul Am Dhikr, the foundational dhikr of the spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've mentioned several points in our previous lectures <coughs> in this series on the Wirudul Am Dhikr. We talked about the adab of dhikr, uh, we talked about the etiquette of the litany, specifically the Weird al Am litany or general litany. We talked about the necessary preparations for dhikr recitation. And then we mentioned the Home Zawiyah project. For you to establish the Home Zawiyah in your home, what is the Home Zawiyah, how is it is established, uh, what are the requirements of establishing the home zawiyah? What you should be doing? Uh, how do you select the place where you would establish the home zawiyah? What are some of the amazing benefits and blessings of having having this zawiyah, the home zawiyah, in your home? Then we talked about the concept of hudur al qalb, the presence of heart in doing dhikr and reciting the dhikr, and we want to continue now talking something starting from where we left off in our previous lecture and then talking something about the importance of time uh, as it relates to dhikr, to maintain consistency in the time of your recitation of dhikr. I want to start off with the concept of hudur al-qalb that we've talked about in our previous lecture and taslim al-jawarih the presence of heart and the submission of limbs in doing the dhikr and to share uh, some uh, examples of how, do, how we do this for different dhikr. Now it is important that you strive to concentrate and focus when you're doing a dhikr. Remember, dhikr is considered uh, one of the most virtuous acts of ibadah if not the, the, the most virtuous act of ibadah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran, wala dhikrullahi akbar, because you're engaging in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no other type of remembrance can compare to this. Uh, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, the Lord, Rabbul Alameen, the remembrance of none of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can compare with remembering the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you need to be absorbed in this remembrance. Uh, you need to immerse yourself totally in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you engage in dhikr. And among the ways to help you to do this is, is for you to visualize the divine name Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala written in Arabic, alif, lam, lam, ha, a closed ha at the end, Allah, that Arabic word, Allah, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You visualize this name in front of you and, and then contemplate on the meaning of the dhikr. This name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
uh, that's indivisible. Uh, you take out any letter from this word and you're left with something that relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, alif, lam, lam, la, uh, lam, lam, ha, Allah. And if, for example, you take out the first letter alif, you're left with lillahi, for Allah. And if you take out the next letter, the lam, the first of the two lambs, you're left with lahu, for him. To him belongs everything in the heavens and on earth. Uh, and you take out the lamb, the second lamb, you're left with who, referring to him, he, Allahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you visualize this name, Allah, as you do your dhikr and try to connect with this name and disconnect from your physical environment that you're in. So you, you can, this is part of the, uh, the immersion uh, in, in your dhikr. And, and then to contemplate upon the meaning of the dhikr you're reciting. Let's say, for example, you're reciting Astaghfirullah, meaning actively seeking the forgiveness of, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I seek the forgiveness of Allah, Astaghfirullah. And, and then you, you think about, ponder upon, uh, in a remorseful way, with remorse, uh, your sins that you've committed in, in your life so far. And then you also think about the, the vastness of the, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that has no limit. Yes, we've committed so many sins, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiven. So we beg Him for forgiveness. Astaghfirullah. Ya Allah, I beg you for your forgiveness in this way. And, and you repent to Allah, you return back to Allah uh, from every sin that you've committed. So this is the thought process and the feelings in your heart as well, the thought in the mind, in the intellect, feeling in the heart, as you're reciting Astaghfirullah, you, you outpour your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <coughs> beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness, in this way that you want to be mindful of. Another example, when sending, uh, invoking prayers and blessings on the Prophet and reciting Salawat, then you think about the limitless virtues of the Prophet ﷺ, the perfect characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ, the shama'il of the Prophet ﷺ. You think about the greatness, the, the maqam of the Prophet ﷺ, his great maqam uh, as the best of the creation of Allah. How he is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored him like no other creation has been honored. So you think about the greatness of the Prophet sallam, as you invoke blessings upon him. You imagine that you are reciting this salawat on the Prophet sallam, and the Prophet is responding to you. Yes, in the hadith is mentioned, the Prophet listens to this, your recitation of salawat, hears it and responds to you. And uh, to, to honor his maqam, uh, there are occasions when angels are there to take your salawat from where you are and convey to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, the Prophet alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, uh, the angels do this for six days in the week except on Fridays. On Fridays, no need for any angels. You recite the salawat and it reaches the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly. What a great honor that is. So you think about this when you're reciting salawat on the Prophet sallallahu uh, Consider it an honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has guided you to recite salawat on the best of his creation, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Imagine you are in Masjid al-Nabawi, in the Prophet's Masjid in Medina, that you are in the road to Sharifa. That place in the masjid as the Prophet described as a garden from the gardens of Jannah, of paradise. Imagine you are in front of the muwajaha to Sharifa, in front of the maqam of the Prophet in front of him, in his presence, reciting salawat upon him in this way. Uh, that you, you focus your, your thoughts on the maqam of the Prophet Imagine you are standing in front of him and you're reciting salawat upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So th these are the thoughts that go through your mind, your imagination, your tasawwur, uh, your visualization, and then the feelings in your heart.
to the prophet and brings you closer and closer to him. The salawat should take you there. Salawat should take you closer and closer to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As your prophet alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, awla nasi bi yawm al qiyam aktharuhum alayhi salatan. The, the closest of people to me, the nearest of people to me, most deserving of people to me on the Day of Judgment are those who are most frequent in reciting salawat. Another example is uh, the uh, tasbih, subhanallah, glory be to Allah. When, you, when you're reciting this beautiful, special, powerful dhikr, subhanallah, then you imagine you, uh, you're glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of this glorification of Allah is because of and the meaning of linguistic meaning of Subhanallah. Tanzih Allahu min kulli naqsin. That you, you're saying and recognizing and accepting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from any and every imperfection. No imperfection can be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be described with any type of imperfection. He is perfect in all respects. That is the concept of subhanallah. And therefore you glorify him because he is the most perfect. And no imperfection can be attached to him. So you say, glory be to Allah. Glorified be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. In this way. You recite in dhikr, alhamdulillah. All praise is for Allah. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to remember the countless bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he is bestowed upon you and upon his creation. And therefore he is most deserving of your praise. So profusely in this humble way with humility, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and you should always think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored you by guiding you to engage in his dhikr, in his remembrance. You want to feel this way. Humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're reciting in your dhikr, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. And you keep reminding yourself, reinforcing this thought in your mind, this feeling in your heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is surely the greatest. There is nothing greater than him. And therefore, there's nothing that can overpower him or overcome him. His will will be done. His will must be done. He is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. You're reciting, La ilaha illallah. There is none to be worshipped but, but Allah, God Almighty. La ilaha illallah. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the virtues of this kalima. La ilaha illallah. Imam al Ghazali mentioned that. Uh, this word is so powerful, this phrase, La ilaha illallah, that when you recite it, it goes on your book of deeds, your record of deeds, goes there, and it's going through the lines, each page, each page, removing the sins as it goes along, and stops only when it reaches a deed that is as powerful and heavy and strong as itself. La ilaha illallah. The best words that came on the tongues of the Anbiya, the Prophets, all of them, was La ilaha illallah. In a afdal dhikri La ilaha illallah. The best words of dhikr is La ilaha illallah. So you think about all these great virtues of La ilaha illallah as you recite it. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And imagine you're getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, this is what the... The Virdul Am does for us. This is what the Virdul Am does for us. It takes us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the, the Virdul Am, the way it's organized, the, you have the istighfar, seeking forgiveness of Allah at the beginning, to purify yourself. Then you have the salawat, invoking blessings of the Prophet, to hold on to the Prophet, to connect with the Prophet, to establish a strong relationship with the Prophet. And then you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with la ilaha illallah. That's, that's the methodology of the spiritual journey to Allah. I need to understand this because that's the only way you can travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you can arrive at your destination. If you take other ways, it would lead you off the right path, the correct path, the straight path. 
So istighfar, self-purification, salawat, connecting with the Prophet ﷺ, establish your relationship with the Prophet ﷺ, and then la ilaha illallah, going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you, you imagine this as you're reciting these words of dhikr. Hudurul qalb, presence of heart, taslimul jawarih, submission of the limbs when you are doing your dhikr. The next concept I want to share with you on this commentary on weird alarm dhikr, and as I said, by extension, Specifically, we're discussing weird alam dhikr, but by extension, it applies to all other dhikr that you want to do. Remember, the weird alam is the foundation, the, the basis, the foundational dhikr of the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is weird alam, general litany. And all other dhikr is re building, resting on that, is built on that, that foundation. If that foundation is strong, all the other dhikr would become effective for you. That foundation, the weird alarm. So the next point is the, the importance of time in dhikr. That you need to understand the connection of time and dhikr. And you need to be mindful of the importance of different times throughout the day, throughout the week, month, year, and so on. As Imam Mashadli tells us, not all times are equal with Allah. Yes, not all times are equal with Allah. In a similar way, not all places are equal with Allah. Not all people are equal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So time. Not all times are equal with Allah. You have... 24 hours in the day. Not all of that 24 hours are equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. The, the, this may seem strange to some people when you mention this concept to them. They will say, well, time is neutral. You do whatever you want to do with time. Make the best of the time. No. The, the, the akil, the intelligent person, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam mentioned, the intelligent person, the akil, for example, the hadith it says, Aqlanas Azhadanas. So he mentioned virtues of different time. And when you understand and know the virtues, the special blessings in different time, you can optimize your blessings by doing good deeds in those times. So for the 24 hours, the last third of the night, the last third of the night is the most virtuous time of the night. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, he talks about this time, وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِ هُمْ وَقْتَ السِّحَرِ That the last third of the night is the special time. And this is a time when in the Hadith Qudsi it's mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest of the heavens. And he asked his angels, what are my servants doing? At that time, the last third of the night. Even though he is Rabbul Alameen, he knows everything. But by, by, by way of demonstration, he asks his, servant, his angels, what are my servants doing? And the angels tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what the servants are doing. Like those who are awake, the last third of the night engage in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, engage in khidmah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the Prophet and for the ummah. They're doing this. What are they asking for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking the angels, they're telling him. What do, they, what do they want? What do they want? What are they asking for? All these different things. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally says, give them what they ask for. Special time, special time. So that's tahajjud time. And some scholars have mentioned also that this, this time is special, the last third of the night, just before Fajr. And how do you calculate that? You take the beginning of uh, Maghrib time, which is the beginning of the night, and the beginning of Fajr time. We start with the day. And you divide that into three parts, and the last part, that's your last third of the night. That's how you would get an idea what time it is. So... 
the, the scholars have mentioned that that time is the most virtuous time because that is the time of the birth of the Prophet The Prophet was born at that time, the last third of the night. It was very dark then. Twelfth of Rabi'il Awwal. And when he was born, this great light came out from his mother, Sayyida Amina, radiallahu anha wa alayhi salam. And it made Mecca look bright. People who were up at that time, they saw it. They saw this strange phenomenon that Mecca became bright as day in, in the pitch darkness of the night. And then that light shone so far, reaching up to Bilad Sham, what is now Syria, Lebanon, and Palestine, and Jordan, that, that entire area, Bilad Sham. And specifically uh, Damascus, Bilad Asham. The light was so bright, reaching all there, making that time special. So not all times are equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then uh, the time of the five daily salah, that, that's a special time. And this is why the dhikr that you're assigned to do is organized according to salah timing. Like you, you, you've heard me saying before, after Fajr, like the weird alarm is recited after Fajr and after Maghrib. After, uh, after Fajr, you're doing certain dhikr, weird alarm tazi. After Dhuhr, you do certain dhikr, Hasman Allah dhikr. After Asir, you do certain dhikr, Hizbul Bahar, for example. After Maghrib, you do certain dhikr, again weird alarm. After Isha, certain dhikr, such as uh, Latifiyya and other recommended dhikr in this way. So it's connected to the Salat time because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed the time of Salah to indicate also the greatness and the sacredness of that time. There are many things that happen at those times. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Fajr time, for example, among the things that happen is the the change of the shift of angels that are with you. The angels of the night are preparing to leave and the angels of the day are coming. And so Allah SWT says that you should recite the Quran. Inna Quran al Fajri kana mashhuda. Quran. So recite this Quran because the recitation of Quran is witnessed at the time of Fajr. Among it, its meaning, witnessed by the angels. The, those who were with you uh, during the night, preparing to leave at Fajr time. Those who are coming to be with you during the day are there. So they witness your recitation of the Quran. It's good to recite the Quran at that time. The angels love this. The angels love this. And this is why we say, uh, after you do your Fajr Salah, you do your weird alarm, recite Surah Yasin, for example. Recite Surah Yasin as your daily regimen of dhikr and Qur'an recitation that you should be doing. So the time is extremely important for you to maintain. What happens is that as you do your dhikr and you establish your schedule, you're doing, the, for example, weird alarm, after Fajr in the morning, that time takes on additional spiritual uh, meaning and significance for you. It's secret in the time. It, it's, it becomes a blessed time for you. And so the other thing you're doing throughout the day. It, it, when you maintain this time, it leads to attaining the desired goal or objective of the dhikr, especially the spiritual effects and blessings and benefits of the dhikr beyond the rewards of reciting the dhikr, which you'll get. You, you recite the dhikr, you get a reward for that. But the additional spiritual benefits that we've mentioned of sakina and rahmah and maghfira and all these other things that descend upon you, 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 get, you get those multiple positive benefits from the dhikr, inshallah. So you need to arrange your schedule in a way to make the the weird alarm, the general litany, your central focus in your day, in the morning and in the evening. 
rearrange other errands so, errands so that you can be, be able to do this. Arrange other duties and obligations around this time, around your Dikir recitation. And, and once you establish your practice, maintain it the time. Like after Fajr, you do it alarm, you want to strive to maintain that time. Consistency in the time of doing the care. Try not to change that time as best as you can. There are emergencies that would arise from time to time, fine. But you want to strive to do, maintain your schedule, maintain your habit, consistency in the time of doing your dhikr. You, you want to struggle to maintain that consistency. Don't move around the time, uh, one day this time and not tomorrow, then another time, the next day, another time, and so on. No. To optimize your benefit and maximize your blessings and rewards. For, 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 for the thicker recitation, try to maintain consistency in time. There'll be some difficulties at first, but, but once you, you strive and you establish this habit, you'll find it, you, you'll experience halawat al iman, sweetness, easiness, beauty when you're doing the dhikr. You start enjoying it more and more once you establish this habit and this practice. And if, if so sometimes if you're not able to do it one day because of some emergency, you, you feel like a fish out of water in that way. Because you're so attached to the dhikr. And that what, that's what makes it powerful for you when you establish this consistency. And you'll also find now that once you establish this schedule, this routine, this habit, consistency, all the distractions and preoccupations are minimized, are lessened through the blessings of litany. Like before, you'll get distractions, wanting to do this, wanting to do that, and so on. But once you strive, put aside those distractions, maintain consistency in your time of doing your dhikr, you find, see, after a while, distractions are less and less. It's not coming to you. Shaitan learned, learned this lesson that you're not submitting to him. You're not surrendering to him, following his distractions, trying to mislead you, misguide you. No, you're maintaining your dhikr with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then all the different distractions, uh, they go by, they fall by the wayside, and you're able to enjoy the pleasure and the sweetness of doing dhikr. And then you, you, you feel this sweetness throughout the day. You started fudging throughout the day like this. You feel the sweetness throughout the night. You know, at Maghrib time, you do your weird alarm dhikr, and you feel this lightness of being, this sweetness of faith throughout your time. In, in this way, you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just by establishing this important uh, consistency in doing your dhikr. And once again, remember that the best times are immediately after the five daily for salah. You do dhikr. And this is why we have assigned dhikr after each salah, as I've mentioned before. And then there are some additional times that are mentioned, uh, such as from Fajr, when you finish praying Fajr, until sunrise, until Shuruq. It's good to maintain uh, dhikr for that time. Um, and uh, some of the Ahlu Tasawwuf, Ahlu Dhikr, the people of Dhikr and Tasawwuf, they've said that you should remain seated in the Jalsa position of Salah as you finish your Fard Salah. If you can maintain that same position and you do additional dhikr until Shuru, sunrise time, which is not that long. And then you make du'a, your du'a is accepted. Some of them suggested that you recite the Hizb al-Bahar. You, you do that pre fajr early in time, then continue until in dhikr until uh, Shuru, sunrise, then you recite Hizb al-Bahar for any specific need. You have a, you have a great, great need for something. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you do this and inshallah it will be answered. Then from Asr to Maghrib is another special time. Especially on Fridays, that's the best time to make dua from Asr to Maghrib on Friday. And generally from Asr to Maghrib, you should do that. And then from Maghrib to Isha, uh, the time of Awabin, to recite a special Salah of Awabin uh, and so on. So th those are special times that you should be mindful of in doing your dhikr. The consistency, trying to maintain consistency in your time.
And, and you, you, you want to keep telling yourself that dhikr is the most important thing for you. You're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is more important than remembering or thinking of or serving or being with the creation of Allah, people and so on. So, and, and this is what distracts you or some people. This, uh, what the actions or the obligations, uh, the actions of people, obligations you owe to people, uh, you, what you think you have to do for people and so on. That's a distraction. But how can that compare with connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you tell yourself this, that this time that you're putting aside for doing your dhikr, it's the most important thing for you. And so you do it. Now, the, the, the final point I want to mention tonight is barakah in time. Barakah in time. The blessing in your time. Because some people say that, oh, I have to spend so much time doing dhikr. I don't get time to do other things. It's taking away from me making some money, for example. And I've, I've heard, uh, you know, some, some brothers saying this, that uh, we, we invite them, tell them to come for Jummah Salah. And right now online, pray Jummah online with us because of the pandemic. Uh, and they say that, you know, that two hours I spend for Jummah, I can do work and get money. You know, that's how they think. But the concept I want to share with you is barakah in your time or barakah in your wealth, similarly. That when you give your time for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses your time. Puts barakah in your time. So you're able to achieve much, much more than people who don't give their time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want to give all their time for the dunya. You achieve more than that. You, your, your time becomes more productive. You know, we've mentioned in the past, for example, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa. Every day he would recite the entire Quran. He would do the khatam of the Quran every day. Yes. In salah and out of salah is recitation. But at the end of the day, the khatam of the Quran once every day. And in Ramadan, he would do it twice a day. Once during the daytime, once during the nighttime. The khatam of the Quran. Then in addition to that, 300 plus rakat of nafil salah. Of course, five days, all the fard are done before. Uh, all the sunnah, uh, nawafil salah, at the at time of the five daily prayer, he does all of that. Then uh, he has his classes with his, with his students, teaching them. Then he has a, a time for people to answer their questions, to give fatwa to them for their fit questions. All of this he's doing every day. Such a great Imam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him barakah in his time because he gave his time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Suyuti, radiallahu anhu, the greatest author in the history of Islam. Author wrote more than a thousand books on all the different topics of Islam. Even up to now, centuries after his passing, scholars are always referring to Imam Suyuti, his knowledge, his writings, his books. And a thousand books he wrote, many of the books are in many volumes, not one, one volume only for a book, a thousand books, no. Some of them multiple volumes, one book that he wrote for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave barakah in his time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave barakah in his time. Among the, more, the wealthiest of people that ever lived, Sayyidina Abdurrahman ibn Auf, the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, Trillionaire in today's country, when you extrapolate his value, the amount of gold and so on he had at that time. On one occasion, he's returned to Medina from a tra trading uh, caravan, a trading trip. He had 700 camels, each one of them laden with gold. Imagine how much gold that is in, and, in, and the value today. Each one of the 700 camels, each one laden with gold. Return from one trip. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Auf, great Muslim, Sahaba, had so much wealth among the wealthiest of people that ever lived. The great Muslim of his time, Mansa Musa, the great ruler of his kingdom, Mansa Musa. Even Western sources consider him to be the wealthiest person that ever lived. They're Muslims, great Muslims. They gave to Allah SWT, Allah SWT blessed them in their time. 
So when you don't think that you're spending too much time doing dhikr, you can never do too much dhikr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You do a dhikr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you more in your dunya than if you were to spend all your time running after the dunya. Yeah, run after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll find the dunya running to you, running towards you. This is what I want you to understand about dhikr and commitment to dhikr, specifically now, consistency in time. Maintain your consistency in time of doing your dhikr. This is from the adab of dhikr as you do your weird alarm. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you to do the weird alarm dhikr and to be from ahlu dhikr. From, to be from men and women of dhikr in this dunya, that your tongues are always moist. We're doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Starting with the weird alarm dhikr and the other dhikr that we recommend for you to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you to be, be from among ahlu dhikr in the dunya and ahlu dhikr in the akhir in genital fear those. Amin, amin, amin. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. to make a special dua today. Uh, there are several requests for dua, so all those who request a dua, we include them in niyyah for dua. I, I want to include special niyyah to make dua for two members of the uh, uh, staff here at Islamic Forum, uh, Sidi Rashad and Sidi Yusuf. Uh, they have their university exams this week. We, we want to make a special dua for them, inshallah. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them success in their exam. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make them be successful in their studies, uh, inshallah, in the university studies. Two members of the admin staff here at the Islamic Forum. So please remember them in your dua. Uh, also, uh, dua of Shifa for uh, Sister Zairo, Siti Zairol. Not feeling well, you make dua for her Shifa. Inshallah. And the sponsors for today's uh, dinner program, uh, Siti Amna. Siti Amna Ali, we make dua for her, Inshallah. And all those who are sponsoring the dinner program here at the Islamic Forum. Also, we have uh, wonderful news to share uh, for the Quran project. Uh, we have two more khatams, inshallah, uh, from Sidi Maulana Tariq in Trinidad. He did his khatam, uh, alhamdulillah. And uh, Siti Zairul from Toronto, she also completed her khatam of the Quran. This is uh, wonderful news um, so because they've, they've started uh, since we launched the, the project, the Quran project uh, reciting. Uh, a few pages every day, at least one page every day, uh, some days more. And alhamdulillah, uh, uh, they've increased their recitation and now they finish their khatam and they'll start again to recite the Quran from the beginning. Uh, inshallah, the, the, the next khatam will take less time. This is what happens. Uh, every time you do the khatam, it, it takes you less time because you get more familiar with the recitation of the Quran and so on. So this is wonderful news. So congratulations to uh, Siti Zairul and family from Toronto for the Khatam and uh, to Sidi Maulana, uh, Tariq and family uh, from Trinidad uh, for this Khatam as well. And congratulations to all of you that have made your knee to be part of the Quran project. If you haven't done so, please do so now, inshallah, uh, to recite at least one page every day. Just take takes a few minutes, not too long to recite one page. <coughs> so you can do that, recite at least one page every day. There are some days, maybe on, on weekends, for example, that you have some more time, you can recite more uh, than one page. You'll be able to do that. And then uh, a time will come when you'll finish your khatam, inshallah. Uh, alhamdulillah, I'm very happy uh, that we have two more of uh, 
our murids that are doing the khatam, inshallah. I also want to mention uh, something about the email message. This is the daily email that we are sending out. So today, uh, the email we sent out uh, has uh, we 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 are sharing some additional episodes from the the series on editors pick videos the EPV series editors pick videos these are uh, special short videos that are prepared by our staff here at Islamic Forum um, for your benefit uh, f uh, for your viewing enjoyment inshallah so we sent out. Uh, new links today for as we continue that series. Last week we focused on the Sira series. Every day we send out a new link for the Sira series, uh, inshallah. Uh, and now this week the EPV series, the editors pick videos, inshallah, uh, for your benefit. So please uh, uh, be mindful about that. You can look at the email and you can then look at the videos. Click on the link to look at the videos, inshallah, they're short videos, uh, less than 10 minutes length, for example. And uh, the latest one is a beautiful one on the concept of Jabrul Khawatir, uh, that the scholars have said it's uh, based on the hadith of the Prophet it is from the greatest acts of ibadah that you can do, uh, Jabrul Khawatir. So I explained in that short video what is Jabrul Khawatir, and I give an example, beautiful example from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was the best of those who engaged in Jabrul Khawatir, this special uh, ibadah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Uh, so and then you can share the video links with, with others, inshallah. Uh, your family members, relatives, friends, you can forward the email to them so that they can access those videos, inshallah. Tonight also, it is the first night of the month of Jumad al-Ula, the month of Jumad al-Ula, uh, a month, once again, that has uh, connection, or, or many great Islamic personalities are connected to the, this month of Jumad al-Ula. Uh, among them, for example, uh, Sayyidina Ali ibn Hussein, radiallahu anhu alayhi salam, known as uh, Zainul Abidin or Imam al Sajda. And inshallah, we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq to be able to share uh, some uh, wonderful information about this great Imam, the great grandson of the Prophet, sallam, the son of Imam Hussein, radiallahu anhu. Uh, Sayyidina Ali ibn Hussein. Zainul Abidin. Zainul Abidin is his title. The embellishment of worshippers, the beautifier of worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of those who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among his titles. Imam as Sajda, the Imam of, of Sajda, of prostration, because uh, he and he was the, the, the young child that survived Karbala. He witnessed Karbala. And for the rest of his life, he would spend endless hours in sajda. His sajda was so long, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Great example for us, uh, Imam Zainul Abidin. He passed away in this month of Jumada al-Ula. Uh, and, and so we want to remember them in this uh, special month of Jumada al-Ula. I, I want to share that with you uh, now on this uh, blessed occasion, the beginning of Jumad al-Ula. There are some special uh, adab for uh, the month of Jumad al-Ula. Inshallah, uh, we would, we'll send this out on the email list. So once again, uh, make sure you're in the email list that you're receiving the emails every day. If not so, please send us uh, an email to the email we use for the program, shaykhfaisal at gmail.com. Inshallah, the admin team would, uh, the admin staff would put uh, that email in the chat so you can make a note of it. Uh, send us your contact details, email list, and uh, WhatsApp number uh, so we can add you to our list and, and send out this information in a timely way, inshallah.
Alhamdulillah. I also want to recognize uh, all our uh, special donors, uh, starting with uh, Brother Tahir Chowdhury and family from Connecticut for the Jamaat al Ula appeal, the special automated donation or the daily donation for Jamaat al Ula. Uh, CD Dr. Wasim Mir from New York, uh, Sister Zinatul Farooq and family from Brampton. Uh, Siti Amna Sayed, a new profile from the mo monthly donation. Sister Nadia Barton from New York. Uh, Brother Shahid Noor and family for the Dollar a Day campaign. Siti Safiya Pessoa from uh, Miramar, Florida. Uh, Sister Brenda Williams uh, from Harlem, New York. Sister Bibi Khan from Toronto. Uh, City James Lapidar from Sri Lanka, Sister Bibi Motilal and the Motilal family, uh, Sister Zairul and family from uh, Toronto. These are some of the names that I want to mention as well. Uh, Brother Patrick Wilson uh, and family, uh, Brother Nadim Amin from Milton. Brother, uh, Nadim, I mean from Milton <coughs> and family, you make dua for Brother Nadim and his family for his donation to the Islamic Forum. Sadaqa Kadgari. Uh, Sidi Mahmoud al Hassan uh, from St. John's, Newfoundland. We thank him for his donation to the Islam Forum. Sister Bibi Farida Chan and Brother Sama Chan. Uh, from uh, Miami, Florida, for her Sadaka donation to the Islamic Forum. And again, a second donation from Sist, uh, Sister Bibi Farida Chan, uh, uh, the one time donation, that category. Alhamdulillah, may Allah SWT bless all our donors. We make special love for them. Sidi Mahmoud al Hassan, another donation. Uh, these are some of the names I want to uh, recognize today. And there's another I, I want to mention. Uh, Sister Mariam, uh, sorry, Maria Ajaz, first of all. Maria Ajaz from uh, England, London, England. We thank her for her do donation. Then uh, Sister Mariam Chowdhury from Windsor, Ontario, for her monthly donation to the Islamic Forum. I, I want to recognize them as well, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them and all our donors. Those who donated today, yesterday, and before, we make special love for all of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, bless the loved ones, uh, bless the entire family, answer all the dua, and reach them many more times because of the donation to the Islamic Forum. Alhamdulillah. Very nice. Uh, so, the special love for all of those who entered the information in the chat. And once again, if you have any questions or so, you can enter them in the chat that we would deal with, those, with your questions and answer your questions as well. And one, remember the home zawiya, establish home zawiya, and let us know tomorrow or when you do it. You can type in the chat that you've established home zawiya and how you're using it and so on. And then uh, as you do so and you do more ibad in your home zawiya, more and more blessings would pour in your homes. And sometimes you get what they call warid or spiritual gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautiful dreams and so on in this way. So dua now for uh, all those who donated, all our donors, special dua for them. The sponsors of the dinner program today, Siti Amnan family. And all those who requested dua, we include all of them in dua. Uh, and for each and every one of you, special of you, whatever dua you want to make, uh, please put that in your heart and we make that dua for you, inshallah. And I also want to include in dua my entire family, my wife, my children, uh, all my family and relatives, and especially my mom and dad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless you. Please remember them in your dua. Kindly raise your hands and join me in dua. Allahumma ameen. 
أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إثم اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قديت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا إلا قديتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ورخنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء ربنا هب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله آمين 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 ميلا سمعت على إنكريس إن توفيق and Kabul and Ziyada. As we conclude our program, I want to make special Allah SWT protect you from the coronavirus pandemic. Protect you, your family, your loved ones from all sources of harm. Keep you safe. Keep you in the best of well-being and state of afia and always keep you close to him. We thank you for joining us today for our broadcast. We hope you can join us tomorrow and every day. Remember the time of the broadcast is starts at 7 p.m. Toronto time. So we can join us and optimize your blessings by coming early uh, and joining the broadcast. Inshallah, arrange your, your time, your errands and so on, so you have this time to look at the broadcast. May Allah bless you for so doing. Remember to reach out to others, uh, to your family members, your relatives, your friends, other Muslims that you know, uh, tell them about the program, encourage them to watch the program, share the YouTube link with them. Also, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Click on the bell next to the subscribe button and select all for notifications so that you'll be notified of all our programs. Um, and uh, remember also our special appeal continue. And now for the month of Jumad al Ula, may Allah SWT bless you tremendously. Until we meet again, may Allah SWT keep you in the shade of his special mercies. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.